Hi everyone and welcome back. Behind me is our newest engine at the museum, but the oldest engine at the museum. This is the rocket that was built in London in 1838. We just got it from the Franklin Institute about a month or so ago. And when it came, it came with a headlight that our curator really wants to put back on. The only problem is, is the bracket for it's cracked. So today, I'm gonna fix the crack in the bracket and we're gonna put the headlight back on this. I'm out in the shop with the bracket for the rocket headlight that I'm going to put back on. Uh, this bracket is cracked. I'm gonna zoom in on it to show everybody. Since this is the first crack that I'm gonna repair on the channel with welding, I'm gonna go over how to prep a crack, how to examine it and see to make sure that there's only one crack and not more and what you're kind of looking for and using as a guide when you're repairing them and what type of welding you're gonna to use to do it too. So now this is cleaned up and sandblasted. You can see it's kind of that like grayish color that the metal turns after it's been hit with the sandblaster. Uh, now we can zoom in here. We can get a really good look at what we're dealing with. So you might think this is a crack. I don't think that's a crack. I think it's just kind of the fallout from when it was made. Make sure it's in focus. Now this side though, you can see it's a little different story. So I'll let it focus right there. This is definitely a crack. And I still think this might be working its way down, but I'm okay with that. I'm still gonna fill it in though. And then if we turn to the front, I'm just gonna fill that. The headlight's a little heavy, so I wanna make sure that this is as good as it can be because after all it is in a locomotive from 1838 i mean it's it's one of the oldest ones left so so after looking this over my game plan for this is i'm going to take an angle grinder i'm going to gouge this out a little bit here and i'm going to slightly gouge this there's a technique you can do called stop drilling where you take a drill bit and you drill on each side of the crack this crack though doesn't really look like it's deep enough for me to do that and it's not really that structural where I feel the need to do it and I, I feel like if I drill through this it's just going to be a kind of a waste so I'm going to take my grinder I'm going to slightly gouge it and I'm going to see how it looks and then I'm just probably going to fill it with MIG welding running a little hot I'm not going to stick this I think it's I think it's a little too the cracks not bad enough for me to do that I'm using my typical PPE when I do this I'm using a face shield safety glasses earplugs respirator gloves and a jacket. So nothing's gonna change as I'm grinding this out. For those of you wondering how far I go into the metal, I'm gonna go about a quarter of its thickness or until I see that the crack is pretty much all gone and I have a nice groove. I'm using a cutting disc. If the crack was a little wider, I'd probably use a different wheel, but for this it's narrow enough where I can just use a cut off disc. Here's the end result. You can see I have some nice grooves in the metal that went over the cracks. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with welding, you might be wondering why I did that. And I didn't explain that at the beginning. The whole reason I did that was so that I am filling it with new metal. If I just ran over the crack, believe it or not, the crack is underneath is underneath the weld and it'll continue to crack even though you welded over it in some cases. So it's just best to grind it out and then weld and put new metal in.
Here is the finished piece. Didn't take too long. Show everybody here. Let the camera focus. So I might touch it up just a little bit more. But you can see I didn't go ballistic with with uh, the finish on this. In fact, there's a couple pinholes, a little bit of porosity in there. Again, if this was a more structural piece, I'd be a little worried. But um, it's it'll be okay. And sometimes when you replicate old things, it's okay if it's not a hundred percent perfect. Like you can see here, it, it it's it's pretty rough where that U bolt comes around, and it's it'll it'll be okay. So that's what we're looking like. I'm gonna go over and we'll paint this. I've let my paint dry on the bracket. Came out pretty good. We're gonna put the bracket on. You can see I have the headlight in place. That's gonna go on. All the headlight does is it slides onto this. So the whole reason we fixed that crack was so that the headlight doesn't slowly start to pull the metal down over time and, and basically bend. There's a couple engines here that are doing that that we're gonna to have to address. So I didn't want that to happen to this one. So this is the headlight on. As you can see, it definitely changes the appearance of the engine. I think it makes it look better. It gives it more of an identity. That's just my opinion personally. There's still a couple things that need done with this project. You might be able to see there's kind of a, a, an electrical cord hanging down from the light. At one point, this was lit. I want to try to do it again here, but I don't like how they ran the conduit for it. It's kind of ugly. You might be able to see some of it down on the bottom. I think we can do a better job. So over time, I'm gonna have this lit up, but for now, it looks good the way it is with the headlight on and not lit. So I'm gonna close out today by just kind of taking a walk through and showing this engine that it's not that big, but it's pretty cool how simplistic it is for its time. 